a really cool dish today with the strawberry limoncello deliciousness preserves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make uh, one of Rioja's signature breads that we do, a goat cheese rosemary biscuit. And then we're gonna make a little whipped mascarpone, macerated strawberries, and some of this really cool jam. So I'm gonna start with the biscuits. And we are gonna take all of our dry ingredients, our all-purpose flour, our baking powder, our salt, our sugar, and our chopped rosemary. I'm gonna take all these ingredients, I'm gonna mix them together well in my bowl here. Making sure the baking powder, the salt, the sugar, everything's nicely mixed. Um, some people might ask, do you wanna sift them together? You could if we didn't have the rosemary, but you just sift out the rosemary, so it's not a good idea. Then we have our butter that's been uh, measured out and diced very small. You can see it's been diced really nice and small. And then after I dice the butter, the best thing to do is to place it in the freezer, which is what I did. And then I also have goat cheese. And I did the same thing, goat cheese. And it's not gonna get frozen, but I placed it in the freezer so it's really nice and cold. And this way, you know, when you're making a biscuit, it's really important that your butter not be melted and over mixed into the biscuit. It's really important that you keep a light and flaky consistency. And what makes a biscuit light and flaky is the steam coming off the butter when it cooks. So that's a super important point. So then I'm gonna then mix this together. And you can just use your hands. Sometimes you have those little pastry chopper things. You can do that too. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. So I need to go a little further here. Um, these biscuits, by the way, are good with anything. So I know this recipe is from here, but it's, uh, it's in my cookbook as well. It's one of our signature items we've been making at Rio Hall for 11 years. All right. And then I'm going to mix in my buttermilk and my whole milk. Make this butter just a little bit smaller. You want the chunks about pea size, but a little bit bigger, it might not leave the rest of the dough tender enough. So it is important to get them all uniformly pea size. Okay, so now we have buttermilk and whole milk. And we're gonna mix this together until it forms a nice dough. But we're not gonna over mix this once we do mix it together. This is why I like to use gloves, it's kind of a dirty job. But if you have the gloves on, it's no problem. Oh. Trying to get all those scraps off the bottom of the bowl. And now, now it looks like about time for me to get this on the board. Because it won't make too much of a mess. It's pretty much sticking together now. And we've got everything out of the bowl. So that looks good. So if this is a one dough ball, it's fine. I'm not gonna try to mix it more. I'm just gonna start rolling it out with my rolling pin. Um, you can make this dough like this and let it sit. But I think the easiest thing to work ahead on this recipe is to completely make the biscuits and then to put them in the freezer raw. I think that's the best thing to do. And you can put them in the freezer for you know a month and you can make 20 and bake up two if you want two for breakfast one day. You know, so you don't have to. Uh... So now we're gonna roll this out. And I'm gonna try, you can put a little dusting of flour on the top. If you don't need to, I'll dissuade you from doing that from working any more flour into the dough. But it looks like I might need a little bit, so I'm gonna get a tiny bit. Pardon my reach, I'm take... Okay. Now, some doughs, um, you have to do certain folds on. These folds are gonna be another way to help lighten the dough, too. So on this dough, we're gonna do a book fold, or a four, four fold. And then we're gonna roll it again. And so what I would do, Make this a little more even though. I'm gonna put this over here. Is I'll take this and I'll fold this to the center. I'll take this side, fold it to the center, and I'll fold this whole thing over. And then we're gonna roll this out again. 
This helps give the biscuits those nice layers that you see when a biscuit kind of looks like it's stacked up and falling apart. Those little scrapings off there. There we go. Just a little bit more of that. And now we'll roll that down. You could do a few four folds if you want it super extra top heavy flake, flaky. Um, but one is enough to make this biscuit light and delicious. And then from here, it depends on how big of a biscuit you want. So for, for one that I think is going to be appropriate for our recipe, we're going to have it one inch thick. This is a good workout too. You can always get mad at people too. No. <laughs> you guys do something wrong, you beat them up. Okay, so you can take a cutter, whichever size you like. Maybe a fluted edge one, you know, is nice. Could be a straight one if you want a nice big one. So this is really personal, really up to you, whatever you like. Um, I'll cut a few of these. And Jarrell said he's hungry, so maybe I'll make a few big ones for Jarrell. He likes biscuits. All right. So if you cut smaller ones, it makes nice for bread service. Uh, if you want to just bis bake some fresh biscuits for dinner one night or for breakfast one morning. All right. And now we can take the scraps and press them together and, re and put them for one more cutting. You don't have to, so if you don't need it, but I feel like that's kind of wasteful. So I think, and we're just gonna press it together and I'm just gonna roll it out. Like I'm not gonna really mix it. So I think that's really important. All right, so I'm just gonna place a few of the biscuits on our tray here. We'll just make enough for six people tonight. And then the rest I will put in a little tray and I'll freeze these. So they'll be ready. This one's not quite as nice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush the top with some buttermilk. Um, the buttermilk will help make it a little bit shiny and delicious. And the buttermilk will also help the salt stick to the top of it. So just a little bit of buttermilk. little bit of salt. Okay, so now I suggest, if you can, I place these in the freezer for 10-15 minutes. The butter will get really cold again. I think they'll bake much nicer. You can bake them right away and they should still be great, but just another little step that make them even better. Okay, so I'll do that. So now that the biscuits have been sitting in the freezer and they're nice and chilled again, uh, we brush it with the, the buttermilk, a little salt, and I'm, I'm going to put them in the oven. 400 degree oven is important. We need what's called oven spring, so some extra high heat in the beginning to help them rise. So if your oven at home hasn't been calibrated, I might check it. Mm. There we go. Okay. Okay. Whipped mascarpone. I like to get a little mascarpone cheese, one cup. And we're gonna take half a cup of cream, and we're gonna put these two things together and whip them. Now I use the word whip; it's you know hard, kind of muscular whip. So <laughs> it doesn't get super light and fluffy, but it definitely gets the mascarpone lighter. So I'm gonna be kind of careful to break this mascarpone down in the beginning and stir it in in the beginning very gently, or else you'll make a mess. So we got it, it's kind of, the mascarpone is so thick, it doesn't quite want to incorporate with the cream easily, but it will. You just got to go at it for a little bit. And then once it starts to be friendly, then we can whip it like you would whip something. There we go. So now this is mixed up nice and light and fluffy. And now we're going to put in a half a cup of this beautiful 
preserves. It's in our basket. Now, as a chef, I know exactly what a half cup looks like. So I'm not saying do this at home. No, just kidding. <laughs> half a cup. And I'm just gonna kind of mix that in. And we're gonna then set this aside in the fridge until we are ready to use this. I'm gonna put it back inside one of my little containers here. I didn't add any sugar to this because I feel like the lemon, uh, lemon cello strawberry is sweet enough. If you want your, your uh, thing a little bit sweeter, you could add sugar. I think when you get it all together, you'll find that it's plenty sweet. So next we're gonna take our strawberries and take the hole off them. All right. So we're gonna take these holes and throw those away. And as I said, we wash these. And so you can cut the strawberry however you like, if you want it in a wedge or if you like it in a slice. I prefer a little bit of a wedge, but either way is fine. And again, because these are kind of big strawberries, or you want to make sure that they're at least bite size, that your guests or you aren't trying to shove a big strawberry in your mouth and it looks, your mouth's too full. All right. Um, and by the way, these macerated strawberries too, these are, you know, also good on almost anything. I mean, like, you know, a scoop of ice cream or angel food cake or something like that. I love macerated strawberries. Then we're gonna sprinkle our sugar on top. Then we are gonna zest and juice this lemon. So I just have a little microplane here. Go right into the bowl. I like to make sure I get all that nice juice. Then we'll just take the juice also and put that in here as well. The juice will help break it down a little bit. The acid will break down, but it'll also give it a nice balance of flavor so we're not too sweet or a little tart and sweet. And then we can just mix this up. And then again, because our biscuits are baking, this will be better in 10, 15 minutes after it sits. And you can let it sit outside or in the fridge, depending on when you're going to serve it. Outside is just fine, you know? And that sugar will dissolve. So you want to mix it up nicely so there's no granulated sugar left in there. And then just let it sit. Um, this is even something you could do, you know, four or five hours in advance. Totally fine. So we'll set those aside and then we'll get everything ready. Alright, so these biscuits are gorgeous and ready. And then we're ready to make our dish.